Okay. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to work through a material and energy balance problem where we have multiple reactions happening in parallel. And so we're going to start with the problem and then I'm going to work through with you how I would approach solving this problem so that we can get to the final answer together. And so hopefully you get some practice solving this problem by yourself and you can see how I would approach solving this problem. So as so we're going to read through this problem and as we read through the problem what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to be taking notes of anything I think is important so that later down the line it'll help me in solving this problem. So let's go. So we've got ethane being fed into a combustion chamber to produce carbon dioxide and water. However, there is a competing undesired parallel reaction where ethane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon monoxide and water. Okay, so we've got two reactions happening. We've got ethane reacting to form carbon dioxide and water, and we have another one where ethane is forming carbon monoxide and water. Okay. So I'm just going to make a note over here. We've got for ethane C2H6 plus uh, we've got 3.502 giving me 2CO2 plus H2O. And to make this balanced, it actually should be plus 3H2O. And just so you know, I don't actually know this off the top of my head. I actually have it written a little later in my sheet. But I thought it'd be handy just for us to write out again everything that we can as we read through our problem. So this is our first reaction and then in parallel we've got ethane reacting with 2.502 to form 2 carbon monoxide plus 3 water. Okay, and I'm just going to make a quick note that this is desired and this is undesired. Uh, and you can't see this, so I'm going to just shift over just for a second so that you can see that. There we go. So here's our two reactions happening in parallel. And don't worry, as I scroll down, you'll be able to see this again. So we've got two reactions happening in parallel. Okay, so we got up to there. Next, we've got a feed stream consisting of ethane, nitrogen, and oxygen entering the reactor at a rate of 580 moles per hour. Okay, great. So what that means is I can start building my block flow diagram. So in this case, we're going to have coming in to our reactor. We're going to have, and I'm going to abbreviate ethane as C2 rather than writing out C2H6 all the time. So we're going to have C2, we're going to have O2 and N2. A lot of two subscripts. How about that? That wasn't intentional in this problem. It just worked out that way. So anyway, we've got our feed stream and we know some stuff about this feed stream. We know that we have an initial flow rate and I'm going to call this stream one. We have an initial flow rate of 580 moles per hour. So we know that. Now, do we know anything else at this moment? Not yet. So picking up where we left off over here, the ethane mole fraction is 0.1. Great, another piece of information, we're gonna write that down. So the ethane mole fraction, and since it's a mole fraction, we're gonna be using the variable y rather than x, which where x is used as a mass fraction. So we got y, 1 C2 is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, the nitrogen and oxygen are fed at a 3 to 2 ratio. So that's 3 parts nitrogen fed to 2 parts oxygen. So we're going to make a note of that. So we've got 3 parts N2 to 2 parts O2. Okay. So we have that as another piece of information. And in that case, we consider that as a process specification because it is something that's relating two of my streams together. It's relating the flow rate of nitrogen to the flow rate of oxygen in stream one. So this is our process. This is a process spec. All right. Now let's see, what else do we have? 
picking up over here. The ethane is fully combusted in this process. Okay, ethane being fully combusted is another process specification for me because it's telling me that I have 100% conversion. So I, sent, I just gave myself a fractional conversion. So we know as another process spec, F conversion of C2 equals 100%. All right, so that's another good piece of information. And now we have a little bit more to go, the selectivity, all right? And so later down the line, if you were solving this problem on the piece of paper I gave out to my class, you'd have that equation, but I'll give it to you in this video. The selectivity of this reaction is three. And in this case, that means that there are three moles of CO2 being produced for each mole of carbon monoxide, okay? So we got one more process spec, and that means selectivity equals three. So that means it's the moles of CO2 over the moles of CO. All right, now in this problem process statement, in the problem statement, and by the way, I just realized that you can't see part of my block flow diagram because my head's obstructing it. So I'm just going to scroll up a bit so you can see everything I've been writing. So we've got our block flow diagram. And in this problem, we're going to be, our goal is to solve for pretty much everything exiting the reactor. So I want to know everything coming out of here, All right? So everything in stream two. And, and I'm just going to outline what our goal is. We're going to be doing this. So we're going to figure out how much ethane, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and water are gonna be coming out in stream two. So over here. And so that's our goal. So we need to get N2C2. We gotta get N2, N2, N2O2, N2, H2O, N2CO2 and N2CO. So that's our goal. That's everything that we want to be solving for. So let's just to start off, let's do a degree of freedom analysis to make sure that we could actually solve this problem. All right, so to do that, we're going to look at our ISVs. Okay, so in our ISVs, we've got in stream one, we've got one, two, three. So we've got three in stream one plus, and since I don't technically really know everything in stream two, we're going to assume that there is every single component in stream two. So that means that in stream two, we would have everything I just listed out. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that gives me nine ISVs. All right. And now if we're looking, we're going to go with our knowns. And in this case, for our knowns, we have two knowns. We know N1 dot, we know Y1C2. So it gives me two knowns. Now, in addition to that, we can also do material balances. And in this case, we get to write a material balance for every single component in our system. Since there are six components, we're going to have six material balances. So we've got another, so we've got six material balances to work with. That's great. Now, the other thing, when we, so I'm just also gonna write minus in front of the knowns and the material balances because that is reducing my degrees of freedom. And so at this point, we also are gonna have to look into our reactions. And since we have two reactions occurring, that's gonna add two degrees of freedom to my system. And so if we're keeping a tally, we at this point, have so 9 minus 2 is 7 7 minus 6 is 1 1 plus 2 is 3 I've got three degrees of freedom and now we have to evaluate anything else that can reduce my degrees of freedom which in this case are gonna be my process specs and we did a really good job taking notes of my process specifications if we scroll back up you see we've got one two three and now we can use those process specs to reduce my degrees of freedom. 
And so since we had three degrees of freedom after accounting for our reactions, three minus three gives me zero degrees of freedom. So now I should be able to solve this problem. And I apologize, I again did not scroll up in time so you can see everything as I'm working through it. But I think as I talk through everything, you should be on the same page as me with regards to how we got zero degrees of freedom. So now we got zero degrees of freedom, and that's great. And what I would like to do at this moment is we're going to set up an extent of reaction table. And the extent of reaction table is a really good way of accounting for all our pieces in the system. So how much is entering and how much is exiting. So in this case, for reaction one, reaction one, we had C2H6 plus 3.502 yields 2CO2 plus 3H2O. So we have all that. And next, we've got reaction two where we've got C2H6 plus 2.502 yields 2CO plus 3H2O. Right over here. There we go. All right, so looking at reaction one, what we're going to do is we'll start with T equals zero. And in T equals zero, we're gonna look at how much of every component we start off with. So with ethane, as we see in our problem statement, we had a mole, a mole fraction of 0.1 and 580 moles per hour coming in. So with that, and I'm just gonna make a note right over here, and I'm just gonna draw that in blue, we've got N, Oh, not blue, different color. So we've got N1C2 is gonna equal Y. We're gonna just change that color. I'm not, not a huge fan of it. There we go. Okay, so let's do that again. So we've got N2 or N1C2 is equal to Y1C2N1 dot. Therefore, it's going to be 0 0.1 times 580 moles per hour. And that's going to give me 58 moles per hour. So we know how much ethane we have going in. So we've got 58. And in reaction two, we also know we have 58 to start at T equals zero. Now the next one, as we're going through our extent of reaction table, we're gonna be looking at how much oxygen I have. And in this case, we need to figure that out. So what do you think might be good to help me with getting my oxygen flow rate? Hmm. Okay, well if you're thinking one of the process specifications, you're absolutely right. And the one that's gonna help us out is the one that tells me that I've got three parts of nitrogen to two parts of oxygen being fed into my system. So if we're looking at, and I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna make some notes a little further down here. So we know that we've got three parts, scroll up a little, yeah, three parts N2 to two parts O2. So that's everything flowing in stream one other than ethane. So if you remember, we identified that N1 dot is equal to 580 moles per hour. You also know, you just figured it out, that N1C2 is equal to 58 moles per hour. And so if I asked you how much of how much of stream one is not ethane C2, what you would do is you just take your N1 dot minus N1C2 to get 580 minus 58, and that's gonna be 522 moles per hour. And so that 522 is everything that is not ethane, which in our case means that this is gonna be N2NO2, 
That 522 has to be all nitrogen and oxygen. And now, since you've been able to identify that you have five parts in your system, right, because there's three parts nitrogen and two parts oxygen, what you can do is something really handy. You can say that I have five parts, so five parts, and I'm just going to abbreviate that as 5P. So you have five parts in your system, and you know that that's going to equal 522 moles per hour. And so what you want to do then is figure out, well, how much is one part? So we just take our we take our parts and we're going to divide by five. So 522 divided by five is going to be 104.4 moles per hour. And so you, now you know every part is 104.4 moles per hour. So what you can now do is you can multiply that our one part, you can multiply it by two, three, whatever the coefficient is for the number of parts for each of your components. So for example, you know that O2 is two parts. So you can then say that N1O2 is going to equal two times one part, one P, so 2 times 104.4 gives me 108.8, sorry, that's 208.8 moles per hour. You also, same logic, you can figure out your N2. So for N2, you have three parts. So N2 or N1, N1 dot N2 is going to equal 3 times one part, which is going to be three times 104.4, giving me 313.2 moles per hour. And now that you've figured that out, that's great. Because if you do first, you recognize for nitrogen, there is no nitrogen reacting in your system. So all the nitrogen going in has to equal the nitrogen coming out. So for nitrogen, you can just say N1 dot, N1 dot N2. Okay, let's try that one more time. All right, N1 dot N2 equals N2 dot N2, which means it's 313.2 moles per hour. So you just figured that out. So we're just going to box that up. And you have now figured out one at the six fluorates exiting your system. That's great. So now, going back, we've identified that your oxygen is 208.8 moles per hour that are entering your system. So now we can use that piece of information and we can substitute it back into my extent of reaction table. So if we scroll back up, so over here, we know that we're starting with 208.8 for oxygen, and I'll write that in both spots, both for reaction one and for reaction two. So we have 208.8 moles per hour of oxygen entering. Now, if you look through the system you'll and look through the problem, you'll see that you're not going to have any carbon dioxide, any water entering the system, nor any carbon monoxide entering the system. And now, you we know everything that's going in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens at T equals T. So now we're going to be evaluating, we're going to look at what's happening and what's being eliminated and what is being produced. Now the other thing you need to remember is when you're dealing with multiple reactions, you need a different variable for to account for what's happening in each reaction. So in this case, for example, I'm going to use Z to represent moles being consumed and moles being produced. So for reaction one, we're using Z. So in this case, for ethane, we're going to have at time T equals T, if we're just focusing on reaction one, we're going to have 58 minus Z. Because I'm using up one mole of ethane for each round of my reaction. Now for oxygen, for every mole of ethane you're using up, you're using three and a half moles of oxygen. So for oxygen, just focusing on reaction one, you're going to be, you're going to have 
minus 3.5z. All right. Now, on the product side for CO2, we're going to be generating 2z because we've got no moles of CO2 coming in. So all we have is 0 plus 2z. And then for the water side, just looking at reaction 1, we're going to be producing 3z. And I'm going to write that a little cleaner. 3z. Great. So that's everything happening in reaction 1. And now when we move to reaction two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take information from reaction one and I'm going to use it in the accounting for a reaction two. So now at T equals T, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of information from reaction one. So for example, with ethane, I have at the conclusion of reaction one, 58 minus Z. Now, don't forget, in reaction two, I'm also going to be consuming ethane for reaction two to produce carbon monoxide. And so I need a new variable for this accounting. So we're going to be using variable y. Let me, I'm going to rewrite that one more time. So we're going to use variable y for anything dealing with reaction two. So in this case, you normally, so building off of reaction one, Normally, I had T equals T, I would have had 58 minus Z. But because I also have reaction two occurring, I'm going to build off of that and recognize that in addition to, or from 58 minus Z, I'm also going to be consuming Y moles of ethane for ma making CO. So it should be 58 minus Z minus Y. For the oxygen, we're going to pretend we're building off of reaction one. so. Our new initial is 208.8 minus 3.5 Z. And now we're also going to be consuming for reaction two, two and a half moles of oxygen for every mole of ethane. So we're also going to be subtracting out 2.5 Y. Right, because we're consuming for reaction one, three and a half moles of oxygen, so 3.5 Z. And for reaction two, we're consuming 2.5 moles of oxygen per mole of ethane. And that's why we have minus 2.5 Y for reaction two. Now for the carbon monoxide, we're not making any in reaction one. We're just making it in reaction two. And therefore, we're going to have two Y moles of carbon monoxide. And then for our water, we're in reaction one making three Z. And in reaction two, we're going to be making three Y moles of water. So we're going to take that three Z and we're going to tack on three Y. So we've now set up our extended reaction table for both reaction one and two. And since reaction two is a bit more updated and takes into account information from reaction one and reaction two, that's the, that's the section that we're going to focus on in terms of solving for all of my final products, except for carbon dioxide, since it's not part of reaction two. So in this case, we're, we're kind of stuck right now. I have two unknown, I've got two variables. I've got Z and I've got Y. So the amount of ethane consumed for reaction one and the amount of ethane consumed for reaction two. So I need to figure out a way to solve for Z and Y. So we need some information to help me out. So in this case, and I'm gonna write a little further down, we know that it we know that for our fractional conversion of C2, it's a hundred percent. So that means that N consumed of ethane is equal to 58 moles. It also means that N C uh, N2 C2 equals zero. And so with that information, what we can do is I can take, I can take this expression, 58 minus Z minus Y, and I can set it equal to zero. 58 minus Z minus Y is going to equal zero. The reason why I can do that is because at time T equals T, that's the final moles I have of my component in the system. So now I have one equation, but I've got two unknowns. So the next thing I need to do is, yep, you guess it, we're going to use a process specification. And we still have one left, which is that my selectivity 
is equal to three. So my selectivity equals three. And with that, that means that three is going to equal the moles of CO2 over the moles of CO. So for us, what we can do is I can go back to my reaction table and you see that I've made, I'm making two Y moles of CO, I'm making two Z moles of CO2. So we can use my selectivity to help relate Z and Y because as we go back down, you know that for moles of CO2, we're gonna have two Z moles at the end and for moles of CO, we're going to have two Y moles. And so in that case, what that means is that three is going to equal, and if you look at the twos, they cancel out. So it's going to be three equals Z over Y. So now we can get a proper relationship. We can identify that Z is going to equal three Y. Let me scroll up for that one. Great. So we see that Z equals three Y. And now I've got two equations and two unknowns. I've got this equation and I've got this equation. And with those two equations, I can solve for my z and y. So what I can do is I can take my expression z equals 3y and I can substitute that in to my first equation. So we can make it now 58 minus 3y minus y equals 0. And so we've got negative 3y minus y. So if we put that together, that's going to be 58 minus 4y equals 0. And now 58 equals 4y. And we can solve for our y. And you'll see that y is going to equal 58 divided by 4, giving me a whopping 14.5. So now that we solve for our y, I can also solve for my z. So we can now go back and z equals 3 times 14.5. And that's going to give me 43.5. So now that I figured out my y and my z, I can return to my extended reaction table and substitute values in for my for all my components. Okay, and just remember, and I'll write it up here as well. So we figured out that y is 14.5 and our z is 43.5. So now, and I'm gonna, like I said before, we're gonna focus on reaction two because it has the most up-to-date format for each of my components, right? So for example, with ethane, I take account of how much ethane is used up for reaction one versus reaction two. Same deal with my oxygen and water. Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are the only ones we really need to focus on their respective reactions. So in this case, we solve for CO2, uh, the amount of ethane coming out, it's going to be zero. For oxygen, we're going to just substitute in, so it's 208.8 minus 3.5 times 43.5 minus 2.5 times 14.5 and so if we substitute all of that in, and I'll let you do that calculation while I'm doing it too, 208.8 minus 43.5 times 3.5 minus 2.5 times 14.5 gives me 20.3. Okay, so we figured out how much oxygen I have exiting after we've gone through reactions one and two. Now for carbon monoxide, we're gonna take two, we're gonna multiply it by 14.5, and that's gonna give me 29 moles per hour. And, that, that it, and I'll just uh, for good practice, I'll write the units in for my oxygen as well, moles per hour. All right, and now for water, same deal as before. We're going to substitute in our Z and Y, so 3 times 43.5 plus 3 times 14.5. Okay, and that's going to give me 
174 moles per hour. All right, and as I said before, we had six flow rates exiting we need to figure out. We just figured out four of them. We know nitrogen from earlier, which was, uh, give me a second, 313.2 moles per hour. So the last thing we need to get is my carbon dioxide. So going up to reaction one, I just need to substitute in for my Z, two times 43.5. All right, and that should give me 87. And there you go. We have now solved our, our parallel reaction problem using extent of reaction. And so just as you're going through and solving this thing, just make sure that you're mindful of what's happening in both reactions and whichever part of your extended reaction table accounts for both of the reactions is where you're focusing most of your energy and efforts.